In this video series, we're taking a look at MicroStation's light types, all of which can be set to provide real world lighting conditions. Before we do, however, I want to introduce you to MicroStation's rendering engine, which is called Luxology. Now we'll be using Luxology from now onwards in this course, because it does provide a real world rendering of a scene. I don't want to get too deep into Luxology yet. It is quite a complex subject, but I do want to show you some of the appropriate settings for what we're doing in this video series. Now you should have the visualization toolbar docked on your screen somewhere. If you don't, go to tools, down to visualization and open as a toolbox. Assuming that's in place, then Luxology is started here with the render. Click on that. And here's the Luxology screen. Now you might want to make a function key for Luxology since you'll be using it quite a bit. If so, the key in string for it is dialog Luxology, which is what you'll put into your function key. However, it's almost as easy to just simply click on that every single time. I prefer my shortcut because it's a single click off the keyboard, but that's your choice. So let's take a look at what we have here. Now, right now the screen is blank because we have not yet made a render. That will change when we start to render things. But this first icon is begin Luxology render. That just starts the rendering process. Now moving along, this next one here called toggle preview is a useful one. It allows you to do a very quick render just to see how things look in the scene. It's not a full render and you'll have to go back to a proper render, but this gives you an idea. Now moving quickly past the rest of them, which we don't need yet, we land on Luxology render settings. So click on that. And this opens up a selection box for the quality and type of render that you want to do. And as you can see in the list down here, we have several different options, particularly interiors and exteriors. Now for the moment, I want you to be on draft. So make sure that draft is selected. And as a matter of interest, if you make any changes in the information here, which we're not going to do yet, then that will turn a different color and you should save it because the save icon will be highlighted at that point. So make sure you're on draft for that. And then you can dismiss that box. And then take a look at the next one we're interested in, which is this one. And this is a view that we're going to render. Technically, we'll actually render the contents of a fence, but it's in a particular view. Now, by default, our active view will be selected here, but you could change it to a different view if you wanted to. Don't worry about this too much. As I said, this is an automatic setting if you're in the active view. Now these two numbers here are the X and Y size of the actual render itself. And these numbers are in screen pixels. And we need a fairly low number at this point because we don't want to spend much time in the rendering process. And the larger you set these numbers, the longer the renders take. Now I've set mine at 600, which is the X direction, the horizontal direction. And the 280 will automatically be generated itself if lock is on. And this is the actual aspect ratio of my view. So your number beneath may be different when you set to 600. And that's simply because of the size of the view that you're working with. Then we scoot down to the bottom. Here we can save a render to a file for future use. We'll be doing a little bit of that later on. Now that file will be saved in a specific location and you would set that here, which is set Luxology rendering history folder. All you do here is open this up and choose a folder in which to put the actual saved renders. You can do that on your own. This and this will go backwards and forwards if we have several renders in the current session and we'll be able to see those in either direction for comparison purposes at least. Next to it is the delete current image. Now this is blank right now because we don't have a current image, but the image on the screen, when you have it, you can delete it directly with this tool. Moving along, we have these two. These are so we can move backwards to see the previous renders that we made. And then of course we can move forward back to our current location. This one sets the background and we'll do that when we actually have a render. This one is quite useful because it allows you to adjust the image itself. If I click on that, you'll see that you can change the brightness and the contrast and a few other things too. 
we are mostly interested in the brightness. We may need to adjust this to make this scene that we want look a little better. Get rid of that. And this one, which we shan't be using, is the switch to make a stereo image. You might want to play with that if you have some red and green stereo glasses. If not, don't worry about it. This is just to fit the image to the window. And this is visible edges overlay. Don't even worry about that at all at this point. So there we have it. There's the basic Luxology settings. And now we can move on and look at light types and start to work with Luxology.